Thank you, Juan. Thank you for Pitch Breakfast for having me this uh, morning. Uh, I'm Brian Iverson. I am the uh, CEO of uh, Pitch Breakfast. Get my arrows right. Uh, I'm uh, supported with uh, Innovate Charlotte with a uh, team of uh, uh, entrepreneurs that are very uh, resourceful and come with many talents in helping me. Uh, today, I'm going to talk to, to you about solar power, vertical solar power, uh, for charging stations for electric vehicles. We have a problem today with the electric vehicle charging stations. Our transmission lines to our homes are not adequate to handle the power necessary. As with California, they had to stop uh, charging electric vehicles between 3 p.m. and 8 p.m. because they didn't have enough uh, infrastructure uh, to handle the additional power. You've got uh, enough power in one electric vehicle in one day for what a, a small home would use in one month. So you've got to keep in mind that the electric vehicles take a lot of power. Uh, electric vehicle owners uh, have a big problem finding places to charge their uh, EV. Even in Charlotte here, uh, I've seen the EV stations uh, fully uh, booked and unavailable. Uh, they have to plan their route uh, for the next uh, charging stations. And uh, the cost of installing them is astronomical, especially when you have to run power uh, to the uh, charging station and you don't have an on-grid uh, source. We're talking about uh, electric vehicles. Uh, the growth is exponential. Uh, we're talking about uh, new laws that are in place for zero emissions in which uh, uh, they must, must switch over to electric vehicles. Fifteen states have signed a uh, memorized uh, a, a, a bill saying that uh, in uh, 2025, uh, 20% 20 20 will be uh, electric vehicles. Hawaii and California will be 100% in 2035. In 2040, uh, you're going to have global domination. Uh, we need two or more charging stations uh, per electric vehicle. This makes uh, for expen uh, tremendous growth. President uh, Biden has uh, uh, announced a $7.5 billion bill uh, to uh, initiate uh, charging stations for electric vehicles across the U.S. So our solar solution uh, for the electrical vehicle charging stations is to provide power for the EV. Uh, doing so, we eliminate the added expense of new tr transmission lines, provide remote locations, and eliminate uh, high installation costs. And we can provide the solar power with our existing parking lots because we're vertical solar. Our solar power fits the model of zero emissions because we're renewable, quiet, clean, and can locate anywhere. We can locate our systems at homes, businesses, and compact spaces where no sp uh, solar power can uh, be installed. Once installed, there's no operating expense, no maintenance costs. Reducing the uh, electric vehicle expenses uh, provide huge savings for companies that run uh, EV uh, vehicle, uh, vehicles, fleet vehicles, excuse me. Uh, that's a, their prime targets uh, for charging stations. Uh, our solution, um, uh, we're working on an octagon-shaped uh, panel assembly that wraps around the pole 360 degrees. We're the only ones that can provide up to 3,000 watts of power in a 36-inch diameter space on the ground. Uh, we can put enough batteries in there to last uh, two days uh, to a week uh, with 7,200 watts of battery power that's behind the solar panels uh, that are wrapped around the pole. With the uh, ability to wrap around the pole, we're withstanding high winds. Uh, we're modeling after the military with our solar panels in which uh, you can shoot at them and they still work. So we can uh, provide up to 10% power in a rainstorm with no direct sunshine. Uh, military uh, laminated panels is what we're using for this uh, solar power. And there's many features that I'm going to skip over because I'm running out of time. <laughs> Excuse me. Our ask um, is uh, for a demo unit that we want to put on uh, UNC Charlotte uh, uh, campus uh, with EPIC uh, documenting the power. Uh, we already have existing uh, units uh, that are set up for remote uh, solar powered uh, camera security systems. So we know it works, we just need to scale up from that uh, point in time. The return, we're looking at uh, 1,900 per vehicle with 3,000 vehicles in a two year time span. So we're looking at uh, quite a few. 
Uh, we're looking at 6 uh, million charging stations in 2021. We're estimating 2% of them will be solar power. This is based on remote locations that would quickly purchase solar power because it's cost effective. Uh, we have several uh, dealers that we have uh, talked to. We've talked to uh, electric uh, uh, vehicle manufacturers. We even have an electric motorbike uh, company that wants to include us uh, on their website uh, for solar power charging stations. Uh, our target, of course, are electric vehicle owners, but we look to contact 65 manufacturers of electric vehicles car dealerships, fleet vehicle owners, government agencies, franchise companies, and electric motor, bike, and cycle uh, manufacturers and dealerships. The federal government alone has over 600,000 electric vehicles in 2022. So in summary, uh, we can uh, uh, use our advantages for the uh, electric vehicle, and uh, we can uh, provide a huge uh, uh, opportunity to satisfy solar power in a remote location. Um, we can uh, change the way we look at solar power uh, with the uh, uh, vertical solar power. We can also change the way that we finance it. We can finance it like a car. So with that, um, vertical solar uh, provides renewable energy for charging your electric vehicles, which can be remotely located anywhere. And thank you. Well, it's always tough to go first. So, it is. <laughs> um, so you know, I always, I guess, I always start with uh, what's you know the goal here, right? And and one of the things that I think um, happens, especially with something that's technically, you know, challenging, if you will, is there's a tendency to want to educate me, right, as opposed to excite me and inspire me, right? So when I think of a pitch, the goal of a pitch is to get another meeting, not to necessarily answer all of my questions or make me an expert on, on what you're ultimately doing. So a couple elements of the pitch. Uh, one is, you know, I think when you present the pitch, you know, you, you don't want to read, right? You kind of want to let, I want to feel from you that you just, you know it inside and out. You've got every answer to my question. Like that's one of my underwriting criteria. is like, I'm sitting across the table from someone and saying, are they just like, do they just know this and I'm not a presenter. I, and that's I'm okay. I'm an inventor. Totally. But, uh, and that's, that's fine. I'm just, you know, um, and from a, from a like presentation of the deck, um, you know, I think the same idea, which is you, you could probably, I don't know if that's how it was created, but you could probably cut and paste this into a Word document and it would read well. But when you're pitching it, you want it to be kind of high level and visual and give me the highlights. And I think that'll help you because in the end, you want to just sort of hit the main themes, yeah. right? Give me the, give me the kind yeah, of main can, themes can, and inspire. Yeah. yeah. So, Brian, you got you have good content, right? Yeah. And I, I want to describe somebody that's your friend, okay? <laughs> somebody that you know, someone who you think of as like sort of a sales and marketing oriented person who's a really good storyteller. Mm -hmm. Can you imagine such a person? Yeah. I think what would be really good for you is for you to present this to them, and then say, "Hey, friend." Can you re-sculpt this and give it back to me? Yeah. Because because I think the, there was there was a yeah the, the, yeah no no so there was a moment when you in the middle of this thing when you started talking about the product when you started talking about how it wraps around the pole and you know you could shoot at it and all that stuff dude you were like you were magic that was awesome right and if you can get there with the storytelling part of this it like your ability to go get the hundred thousand will increase. Right, that's what I think. Right, yeah, yeah, yeah. for sure. Yeah. Um, so, so whoever yeah. that friend is, right, make a list of a couple of friends and say, "Hey, man, like I'm going to pitch this to you. You re-sculpt my slides and then come back to me and pitch it to me, and then you'll have something to work with." In my opinion. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. And um, you know, so I agree. I think there's probably something technologically interesting here. I think helping me helping me understand and quantify and and mash up against how this problem is solved today and what's technologically superior about what, what you're doing is, um, is very useful, right? Because I, I don't own an EV at this point, but um, I, yeah, I was, get a sense yeah, of kind I've, of the I, I was I don't know about y'all, but I was really educated by 
the power consumption associated with one of right. those cars. Yep. Right? That was that was real news for me. And I think all of us know that electric that electric vehicles are like happening, mm -hmm. right? And so like this was a problem I was not aware of. Right. And like that was like that was a that was a good moment. I think I would emphasize that. Yeah. 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 Because you always want to be on the right side of a trend, yeah. right? Mm -hmm. um, There's a lot happening in the electric vehicle uh, marketplace. They're not going to be just used for transportation. Uh, Ford is saying that their uh, electric vehicle truck is going to be uh, something that they take to the construction site. And there's 12 outlets on the truck. They're also pitching it, saying that the truck's power will run a house for 10 days. Um, we're also looking at the electric bikes uh, that can be street legal. And uh, this one's the cheapest in the U.S. at $6,000. And we're talking about uh, electric uh, bikes as well, especially for law enforcement uh, uh, agencies and such. Um, so there's a lot of uh, different um, uh, avenues right now for electric vehicles besides uh, uh, cars. Um, there are uh, rentals that you can get from Hertz now that are electric vehicles. Uh, Ryder does a uh, electric box uh, truck that you can rent to, to move your house. Uh, there are electric planes out there. There's everything that's gone electric. So being vertical solar uh, I can put the same solar in the same parking spot as the electric vehicle and charge it up with no change in the infrastructure. That is huge. Here's a sample of my solar power that I brought with me. So feel free to touch it afterwards. I want to say this to you too. I think that your value proposition of raising $100,000 to build a prototype and kind of demonstrate sort of a proof of concept thing. Mm -hmm. um, I think that the people that you pick to solicit for that money is really gonna have a big impact on how successful you are. Yeah. I think if you go on the professional investment circuit and talk to companies like Idea Fund and that sort of thing, it's gonna be very disappointing, right? Because they're not, that, that sort of uh, investment opportunity doesn't really fit what they're looking for. I think that I would really encourage you to find someone who is an individual, right? Who um, is wealthy and who is really motivated by either solar power or the green movement or electric vehicles, right? Because I think you, if, you met, if you met 20 such people and showed them what you're talking about, that, like if they were qualified and they had the right amount of money, I think you could raise the money in one, in one go. Mm -hmm. But I think if you met with 20 venture firms like Chris's, I think you'd get polite, like, polite no's from all of them. Yeah. And so I would really discourage you from going to the professional investment community right now. I would really encourage you to find high net worth individuals yeah. who have a passion for the space. Think, think SVP yeah, up at Duke pitches. Energy or Say Siemens again. or, you know, places one like that. One yeah. pitch with the individual yeah. is far more effective so, than so like, a group of 100. So, so I think, like as an example, the Charlotte Angel Fund, which is a great resource to our community, um, I think it's very unlikely that the Charlotte Angel Fund would invest in you. I think it's very likely that a member of the Charlotte Angel Fund would, mm -hmm. right? right? And so, like, right. that's sort of the way to think about it, right, in my opinion. And my point of where I'm at in my marketing is I'm trying to get a unit assembled at a university like UNC Charlotte in the EPIC uh, department, which is known worldwide for solar power and solar power uh, research and development. I've been a, uh, a COO of a solar panel manufacturer for military, and I've used them quite often. And so they're uh, recognized, and that's what I need to launch uh, and do the one-on-one -on -one pitches, so, pitches is so, to have it so set. You should make a list of all the rich people that you met in that industry, <laughs> right, who like you. No, I'm serious, yes. right? Because yeah. they already know you, right, and they already think, oh, yeah, Brian's a good guy. And now if you come and say, look, I've got this thing, and I think it can really change the world, and I need 100 grand to put one on a campus, and I need, I need an investor who gets it, like, you probably already know this person, right? Mm -hmm. But my, my general feedback to you is, I'm glad you're doing what you're doing. Mm -hmm. I was really unaware of this problem. Um, your content is great. You need some help with the storytelling element yep. of it. Mm -hmm. And man, target rich people who care about this subject for Correct. the first 100K. That's yeah. what I would say, yeah. right? Yeah. But I would 100%. like, this, doesn't this seem cool? Like, I mean, raise your hand if you want Brian to succeed. I do, I want Brian to, like, we're all kind of, we're like, you converted the crowd, we're all rooting for you, right? It was good, cool. Time for a question? Yeah, sure. Do we have a question? Who's your customer? 
I have uh, targeted electric vehicle manufacturers where they can offer it uh, at the same time that they're selling their electric vehicle to their customer. I'm looking at uh, fleet vehicles. I'm looking at those that are franchises like hotels, restaurants uh, that can put out the solar power out in their parking lot. Um, of course, uh, electric vehicle uh, owners are, are a big uh, part of it. Government, especially with 600,000 uh, vehicles uh, that are just in 2022 alone uh, that will come out. That's including the post office uh, trucks. That's including the uh, forest service, um, the park service. So there's a lot of electric vehicles out there uh, that can need a charging station. Can I give you one piece of thought on that too? Mm -hmm. I think that's a really wide range of customers. So as a professional investor, my interpretation of that is you don't know who your customer is. And that's fine. I think you're building a prototype, right? So I'd almost put it as, here's our hypot, like these are who we think our customers are gonna be. Um, but the goal, especially as you get to like version 1.0. Oh, perfect. I've got two. Uh, Amazon with the uh, uh, Sprinter truck that's coming out from uh, Mercedes. Uh, that's the contract that's already uh, announced. And the second one is uh, in Charlotte alone called the Rival. They've got the uh, UPS contract for electric vans. Got two I've got two customers. And that I'm both targeting. of them are very similar. Very so that's your customer, right? Your mm -hmm. customer are people who manage large fleets today, mm -hmm. right? right? So go deep on that customer. I'm guaranteed that gets you to a market size that's good enough. Um, the wider you spit on, on customer segment, the less I believe that you know who your customer is. But you've got two great customers, so highlight those. Right, so <clears throat> is this working? Yeah. Okay. I don't even think I need it anyway, do I? <laughs> um, so my question is, how do they typically, how do these charging, because there's one in my apartment complex that I'm living in now, um, but they, I, I don't see a solar panel, or how do they typically, how are those things set up? Is this something new to, yeah. Innovation. I put two of uh, solar panels together in octagon shape. So I've got a sunny side, I've got a shaded side. As the sun passes over, I get the sunny side to be the shaded side and the shaded side to be the sunny side. And I take the power individually from each of the panels and putting it into the battery separate so I don't lose the power from the sunny side going through the shaded side. So this is my IP, this is my intellectual property. But how do they do it now? Right now, they put solar panels on the roof or solar panels on the ground. They spread it out, and apartment renters, they don't have a chance uh, to even use solar power because they don't have the space. They don't own the, uh, the space on the ground or in, uh, on top of the roof, whereas I can put a pole right at the parking uh, lot uh, uh, spot that they own, and we can provide uh, solar power with two wires running to their uh, meter, and they're all set to be off grid with solar power. Nothing on the roof, nothing spread out on the ground. Storytelling thing. Mm -hmm. I'll tell you somebody who could help you with that is Juan, right? That's what he does. It's good. No, no, it's true, it's what he does, right? And I, like, I didn't even think about that until now, but like, that would be a good use of resources in my opinion. All right, with that, let's give a big round of applause to Vertical Solar, Brian.